What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Tobacco Talk. I'm your host, Cigar Show Tim, and every week I review a cigar, give you my thoughts on it, flavor, construction, burn, draw, all the things that you want to know about, and well, hopefully educate you a little bit in the process of my cigar journey. If you enjoy that kind of content, make sure you click subscribe, ring that bell, and you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. First off, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I had a great time with my family, uh, and it was just nice to sort of unwind for a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving as well. So this week's review, as you see in the title, is a stick from Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, Mr. Steve Saka himself. This one uh, was sent to me by a good buddy of mine, uh, and uh, I'll just leave it anonymous at this point, because why not? And so this one that comes to me for this week's review is the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. This is the U-Boat pre-commission. Let's light it up. So this week's cigar, Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust U-Boat is what it is. And uh, I have been hearing a decent amount about this. It's been out for quite a few months now, take off the foot band. And I've heard quite a bit about it, but I wanted to check it out for myself. So let's go ahead and get into it and see, uh, see if Steve Saka's palette on this one hits mine. It does have, here I'll show you, it's got on the cap, there's a little bit of a pigtail on it. So you can see there's a little bit of a pigtail on it, a little bit of a twist to it, but it's a long sucker. I didn't look it up, but I believe it's probably about a seven to, yeah, probably about a seven inch, maybe seven and a quarter, uh, by probably, I'm guessing, maybe 50-ish, 48 to 50. So let's cut it and light it. Let's get some bits in my mouth. Let's get some cold round notes on it. Dark breads. Like some dried fruit. Some baking spice in there too. A little bit of spiciness in there. A little bit of spicery on the cold draw. Let's see what happens with this. It's packed pretty well. It's actually packed very well. It's packed very, very tightly. Seems everything's great on it. Don't really have too many veins. I can see one pretty decent one but it is rolled and packed very tightly. Lighter! Here we go. All right, so off of light up, very, very earthy, super earthy, with some dark like oak wood in it too. The draw is probably at a medium draw, not too tight, not too loose. All right, well, I've cut, I've lit. I'm gonna jump into the first third and I will be back with all of you and my thoughts on the first third in just a second. Be right back. All right, everybody, I'm back at the end of the first third with the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust <clears throat> U-Boat pre-commission. So a little bit about the blend. Really all I know is that it's a Puro. I don't know anything more than that. And from what I've heard and seen uh, from Bob the Cigar Guy and other people, it's a little bit of a variation or a variant from the Unstolen Valor in terms of blend. Um, and I am pairing it 
with some of my TurboJet coffee. I'm working on a custom blend right now, actually, for TurboJet coffee. So uh, I won't tell you what this is, but it pairs quite well. And don't worry, I won't, you know, slurp in the microphone for you. So flavor notes. The flavor on this has developed a little bit more. It's definitely earthy. I got a little bit of nuttiness in it. It actually reminded me a little bit of the um, Sober Mesa. Some nuttiness in there as well. It reminded me quite a bit of that actually. Um, but there's the nuttiness, there's some earthiness. There's also some sweet tobacco notes that are in it as well that were really good, that are really good, that I'm enjoying. Now the burn on this is doing really well. It's straight except for a little part here I'll show you. Right there, it's a little bit uneven. I haven't touched it up. I haven't had to relight it. I haven't done anything with it. And the draw is doing well. Smoke output is pretty stinking good as well. Um, but those are the flavor notes in it. That's the makeup of it. Again, all I know is that it's a Puro and that it's a little bit of a variation uh, or variant from the Unstolen Valor. Uh, this is a limited edition cigar and I looked up the Vitola and everything on it. It is, I was actually pretty much right on. It is a seven by uh, 48, I believe, or 50. Shoot, now I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. I think it was a seven by 48. And so that's what I'm getting in the first third. Those are my thoughts. Those are the flavor notes, burn construction, the draw, all those different things. And as you can see, tons of smoke output. So I'm going to jump into the second third, keep smoking this down. A little bit of breadiness, some rich breadiness, some, some dark, like thick molasses bread. So I'm going to jump into the second third, and I will be back with all of you, well, when I get there. Be right back. All right, everybody, welcome back at the end of the second third on the U-Boat. Every time I say U-Boat, I don't know why. I think of Gilligan's Island in a three-hour tour. I know, random, stupid, but welcome to my brain. So flavor notes in the second third of the cigar. The flavors that were in the first third continue. There's a little more of a transition. There's a like a, a little bit of a pepper coating on my mouth, but there's also a little bit of a leathery note, uh, quite a bit of a leather note, actually. Some good savory notes are there, some baking spice. Couldn't tell you exactly what the baking spice is, but there's just like a nice savory baking spice note to the cigar now as well. And it just keeps smoking really well. The burn's about where it was at the end of the first third. There's a little bit of a wave to it, but overall it's relatively straight. Stays lit really well. I mean, I've put it down for a few minutes while editing this and doing some different things and picked it back up. And it's still, it's like it wasn't sitting at all. So. As far as the burn and the construction and everything, it's doing really well with all of that. So those are the flavor notes. That's what's going on with it. Uh, not much of anything else noteworthy in terms of flavor notes or how it's going. So I'm going to continue smoking this down. And we will see when I get to uh, the end of the cigar. I don't know why I had that crazy delay. But when I get to the end of the cigar and let you know what my overall thoughts are, as you know here at Tobacco Talk, it's either nubworthy or it's not. That's just how I do it. That's just how it goes. So I'm going to smoke this down. We'll get to the end here, and uh, I'll let you know what I think of the cigar after all. All right. Be right back. All right, everybody. Let's wrap up this review. It wasn't quite a three-hour tour, but it's a nice long stick. <clears throat> so, so the final third, flavor notes, much more earthiness came through. Uh, strong leather, the leather did ramp up quite a bit, but there was some minerality to it. Some saltiness was in there, uh, and it was pretty good. So, you know, the, the cigar did transition a decent amount throughout the first third to the second third to the final third. There's still a little bit of woodiness that's there. The leather is still pretty pronounced. The pepper is still coating my mouth a little bit, so it's stayed relatively the same. There's been a little bit of hints here and there that have gone through it. Uh, another cigar that it reminded me of is actually the Naka Tamale. 
was, or however you pronounce it, I'm going to call it the Naka Tamale. Um, it reminded me of that with the nuttiness in the second third. So overall, does Steve Saka's palette match mine? On this one, I would say that it matches my palette pretty well if I want a more full, uh, full flavored, full bodied. It's not quite a full body like knock you back, but there's definitely some good fullness in there. I'd say it's probably a medium plus to a full in terms of strength, but this one's pretty good. I've enjoyed it. So, you know, I I'm going to say overall, is it nub worthy? Yeah, I do think it's nub worthy. Is it one that I'm going to run out and try to find? Well, one, it's limited edition and one of the places online is sold out. So, uh, no, I'm not going to run out and try and find it. But I will say that this is a good one. If you enjoy a lot of the rich, earthy, leathery, woody notes with a little bit of nuttiness in there, then this is right up your alley. This is a cigar that you should absolutely, if you can get your hands on it, you should check out. So I want to thank uh, my buddy, and I'm going to leave him anonymous, but you know who you are, who sent this out to me, so I greatly appreciate it. And those have been my thoughts on this U-Boat by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. Overall, I've enjoyed it. Is it one that, you know, if they were readily available, I would I would go and get? Maybe. If someone handed it to me again, I would definitely smoke it. It does take quite some time. It is seven inches long. But it's been good. I've enjoyed it overall. So those have been my thoughts on the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust U-Boat. If you have had this, leave some comments down below as to your take on it. What did you think of it? Did my flavor notes and the you know palette that I have sort of match up with what you've experienced? Um, and if you've had the Naka Tamale, if you've had the Sober Mesa, honestly, I think you will enjoy this cigar. If you've had some other Dunbarton cigars, then leave me some comments down below because I'd be curious to see what your thoughts are and if you've had this one specifically as well. So that's going to do it for this edition of Tobacco Talk. And uh, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. So enjoy your cigar journey. I'm Cigar Show Tim. As always, I'll see you.